Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Hayes, and this is an overview of IR6690, the capstone, where I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I run the course. So the overarching objective in this course, the only thing, there's one, you know, there's one due date, and that's the end of the sixth week. And you're, what you have to do is you have to write a 20-page or 5,000-word research paper. You have to get a B or better on this in order to graduate from the program and, in essence, pass the course. So uh, it's a big deal. You have six weeks to do it, and uh, you've got to really, uh, really kind of hit the ground running. So I, I hope this video will help you get ready for that. Now, the course schedule. Uh, we're going to start off in week one or maybe even now in week minus one or two or whatever it is when you when you watch this uh choose your topic and start your literature review this is the most important thing you've got to pick your you've got to have a topic something you want to do something about ir and then you have to kind of develop that target that topic and you do that through doing a literature review and this is what I find is most people come in, even, you know, maybe they've got a proposal from 6601, but they just don't have a lit review ready. And so they, they don't have a grounding in what's the literature, what has already been done on this topic. So this is really important. So in the first week, I'm like, all right, let's choose the topic, talk about it, and then start the lit review. Second week, write the lit review. Third week, write a research design. Right now, I say write these things. You're writing the paper, okay? You're starting the draft. We're working on it, and every time you do something, it's important to communicate with me, right? So in the first week, I really like to have a phone call with everyone. Maybe it could be on on Zoom or some other thing, but I, a, a, a a synchronous discussion, right? About what's your topic? What are you thinking, right? Then as you start writing stuff. We can still talk, but a lot of the feedback will come to you through Canvas on these things. So, but as you see these things, you write the lit review, you send it to me, I, I give you feedback, then you write a research design where you lay out the methodology for what you're going to do, and then you send it to me and I give you feedback. And then, you know, so that's week three. Week four, you, you know, nothing, I'm not, I'm not looking for anything from you, but you're going to conduct the research. At the end of week five, you submit a draft. This is my chance to look at what you've been doing, where you are with the project, and you will get feedback from me. You will also get, you know, uh, in week five, at the Friday week five is your chance to drop the course without a failing grade. And that always comes up the Friday before the final draft is due. And there's always a, a question of, hey, is this gonna work out? Or should you maybe try to withdraw and not get a, a C on the? And, you know, for some people, that'll be an issue. But that's what we do in week five. You give me something. I give you some feedback. Then in week six, you submit the final paper. Now, there's no textbook for this. You may want to dig out your research methods, textbooks, and other things. Most of what you're going to use in the course is scholarly journal articles. That you're going to get through JSTOR on our Troy Library database or EBSCOhost, right? You are. Uh, you may also want to get some books, but you know the, the time frame to get them is short. The feedback and mentoring, right? This is a collaborative effort, right? I am on board with you. I am going to help you in ways you probably haven't ever had help or interacted with a faculty member before. After each assignment, I'm going to give you audio feedback. I'm going to record an audio file and it's going to be in the assignment comments in your well, in canvas and you you need to go and listen to it and then you know that might be enough a lot of people are like okay i get it oh and they go on other people want to talk to me right so i'm like okay yeah definitely let's talk uh try to do that after you've listened to the feedback and but at the same time you know you need to make an appointment right uh for the first first of all let me just say if you're starting the course off, it's very important to make contact with me and to talk about the topic and to let me kind of go back and forth with you, suggest things, uh, you know, at the beginning. And, and you can just cold call me. 
right? I'll send uh, everyone out who's in the course will get an email from me with my phone number. And you can cold call me and say, hey, I'm in your class. Is it a good time to talk? We can talk. And I'll, you know, we'll, we'll get started. Once you started writing stuff, well, now we probably need an appointment. You need to make sure I've actually read your stuff, right? Because there's a lot of people in the class, right? I've got to get through it. And I've got to be at a place where when you call me, I can look at it and be, be ready to talk. So it's good to make an appointment. And, you know, again, if you need to use Microsoft, Troy has Microsoft Teams. There's Zoom, Skype prefer Zoom over Skype. Teams is good too. You can do all that. Um, especially for people in Europe, they have trouble calling. That's fine. Or you just call me, right? Just a good old phone call. The thing about it is uh, we can, we'll get that going. And so you want to start off with that. And then as we go along, we will interact and you can call me. So uh, when you make an appointment with me, if you do that, I always ask people, hey, why don't you suggest a time? Students are often, hey, you know, I'm good, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I don't know when when's good for you. Uh, so generally what I ask is for you to say, hey, this time would be good for me. Was Does that work for you? Because remember, it's my job to do this for you, okay? So I like you guys to tell me when it's the least inconvenient and we just uh, sometimes we go back and forth with emails, you know, also, you know, don't say, hey, can can I talk to you, you know, today at, at three? No, you can't, uh, you know, give me a little lead time. So I like to wake up in the morning knowing what I'm going to do in the day. OK, so do give me a little bit of lead time when you suggest an appointment. And so I can get back to you and say, yeah, this would be good. Uh, but generally, the answer is yes. And you're going to get, uh, you know, when we talk. It, it's so important to talk, uh, especially at the beginning, so I can zero in, I can ask questions, we can immediately get back and we can zero in on your assignment, not me talking about generalities, right? That, like, like I'm doing right now. So this is the most important part of the course. And honestly, I think this is something I do pretty well. General comments, uh, and, and these are kind of old, but uh, they're, they're hanging around. Selecting the topic, framing the question is, is half the battle. And part of that is the lit review, right? It takes research, i.e. the lit review, to properly ask the question. And whatever topic you've got, if it's IR, there's probably some aspect of it that you could research. So a lot of times, so like people say, well, I want to do this. Do you think I can do it? I'm like, I don't know, right? Go look at the research that exists already, see what people have done, see if there's an opening here, and then we can move forward with it. So that is the, the thing you're going to do in the first couple of weeks. And that is so important, right? The question you ask, the other thing is, the question you ask determines the shape of the research, right? What methodologies you use, all sorts of things, right? There is no cookie cutter here there, you know, so, so much depends on, you know, from the very beginning, the topic you choose, the literature you find on it, the aspect of the topic you want to look at, what you're trying to find out, what your dependent variable is, what, and what questions you're asking. It really, you know, that will drive whether it's qualitative or quantitative or, or, you know, case studies, you know, so much follows from that. And that's why it's so important to back and forth because I have to talk specifically about your paper. So, but this is something, these things are idiosyncratic. They have a life of themselves and that's, you know, we're going to go through and we're going to work through the process. Uh, keep, do keep in mind, good research and analysis require structure and focus. You have to have a research design, right? And so after you get the literature review done, you're going to have a research design that's going to lay out, hey, here's how I'm going to answer this question. Here are the steps. You're going to lay out the plan of what you're going to do in the paper and, you know, how you're going to answer the question. Uh, in case studies, this can be very, very heavily theoretical, where, you know, if you're going to do a case study, you need to have theories about 
what is going on, right? Like if you're going to look at something, you have to have, you know, you, you have a dependent variable, you have something you're trying to explain. You have to have some notion of what the independent or the causal factors are. That comes from theory, which by the way, and you'll hear me say this a lot, theory often presents as explanation. When you're looking at a case, you know, I'm not talking, when I talk theory, I'm not talking realism and constructivism. I'm talking, hey, what have people said, right? If you're trying to look at whether a coup is successful, what have people said is important for whether a coup is successful or not, right? That's a theory, a causal story. Uh, it may be more specific than that. You may have explanations of how, you know, what's driving the change in voter alignment in Chile, right? And it, people will have ideas. So a lot of times the theories present just as explanations and previous conclusions of previous research. But there's a lot that's going to go into that. And your research design, that third week assignment is where you lay that out and say, if you're, especially if you're looking at cases, that's where you say, all right, I'm interested in this. I'm, I want to look at these cases. Here are the things that people say are important and I'm going to look at them and I'm going to look at one, two, three, right? And that's your framework for analysis. That is laying out structure. That's what I'm talking about. That's a very important part. Without a good theoretical framework, the data of the world will overwhelm you. And also, by the way, if you don't have theory and you do a case study, you're not going to pass. Just you know, plain and simple. Uh, we really need to see a good theoretical framework in there. So that's something that we will handle in that research design. Uh, and that is something we will talk about. But these are things just substantive points want you to be aware of going into it. Bottom line on all this, hey, stay frosty, focused, and engaged. Don't despair of the end. Don't look at 5,000 words. Oh my God, how am I going to do it? You're going to do more than 5,000. You're going to do seven, eight, ten. I don't know. You're going to do more than five. And it is not going to be a problem by the time we're done. What you need to do is focus on your next step on, okay, here I am. I need to pick a topic. And then once you pick a topic, I need to do the lit review. And then once you do the lit review, I need to, from that lit review, have a question that comes out of it and design research to answer it. Right. And we answer, we deal with one problem at a time. We deal with one step at a time and th the process unfolds. And it, you know, for most people, you'll get done. Look, 80 percent pass my class. OK, of the 20 percent that don't pass, 10 percent, the world reaches out, grabs them and takes them away. So there's, a, you know, a, about 10, you know, about half the people that don't finish with me are folks who have circumstances under their outside their control you know they deploy something happens and they have to withdraw uh then the other half the 10 percent, is usually like two people a term you know two three you know, uh they just don't get it they don't understand what i'm talking about when i say you need theory you need things and and they for some reason are not working on and and those folks usually i in week five, I say, look, I will work with you till the bitter end on this, but I don't see you making it. We've got problems. You're sideways to the assignment, and they usually withdraw from the class. You will still owe money if you withdraw, right? You will still owe the money. Somebody got pissed. They were like, oh, I still owe money. I was like, well, yeah. yeah. Um, but you won't get a failing grade that way. So, you know, we've got an exit ramp, right? and we're going to work on this. So I'm just like, look, stay frosty. But, you know, work on the paper, work on the next step and talk to me and stay engaged with me. And that will, you know, pretty much that's how we'll get through this. And for most of you, this will be a satisfying experience. You will come out of it. It will be work, but you will say, oh, I did that. And it's really actually kind of cool.